So welcome to the first episode of Watch Ryan Cringe for like 10 minutes because today I'm going to critique my own short film. I have critiqued you guys' short films in the past and uh, today I decided, because I think somebody suggested it at one point, but today I decided I would do that and the one I selected to do that with is Losses because it's one of our earliest films. Even though I, I never did really consider Losses a short film, even though it's called a short action film, even at the time it was, it was kind of an over blown camera test. Uh, Eric Kessler let me borrow uh, the Red Epic, so I really quickly last minute threw this together, but they, I'm making excuses for it. Let's not make excuses for it. Let's just watch it and rip it to shreds. So right off the bat, I really wish that I didn't put the Trying Films opening logo here like we did because, uh, again, I never considered this a short film, and I try to keep that logo just specifically for films like Ballistic, Tell, Proximity. Uh, all the music here was from APM Music, too. This wasn't uh, custom music. And this shot is, is kind of annoying. It's really sloppy. It's not super well done. And it's because we didn't have the tools to really pull it off. So instead of having this move, because it's just this wobbly, it's just not great. Instead of having this move around, uh, I, I would have just done it as a static shot and not even cut to the trunk because this trunk shot looks really cheap and even him pulling it out he's like josh is helping him get out like nothing about this is setting the right tone i just would have done one shot and just seen in the distance somebody getting ripped out of the trunk and let that be like an aggressive thing i do like the slam into the cut here i do, I do like that and then there's like this spotlight to the right of him <laughs> it's like a lens flare that i thought was cool so i left it but looks just weird like touched by an angel, but they just missed by a few inches. And my biggest issue right off the bat with this scene is just this jitter that you're seeing, that just really fast uh, and tight like shake that's happening. And it's because I was holding the camera in my hands. I needed to put it on something because there was no image stabilization with the lenses we were using. I mean, overall, it doesn't look bad. It looks pretty good. It's just that, ah, uh, that shake is obnoxious. At some point you have to cut I off. wish there was a little bit of detail in the background too, with just how flat it is. It's feeling kind of like cheap TV, less cinematic. Like that, just something, a little bit of something, even though Bruno is horribly blown out in the background there. God. Here's a paperclip to kill someone with. It's so stupid. A paperclip? Why a paperclip? Why did I choose a paperclip was the thing to go with? And here we go, title of no. the movie. I cut my losses. This is a terrible line. It's a terrible line because I called the film Losses and then had him say losses. I hate that. Why did I do that? I don't know. And this shot right here, God. Why? Awful, 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 awful. And it's because there's no detail. It's just this black wall behind him. So it feels unfinished. It almost feels like a taped rehearsal or, you know, a stage play or something. It's just, we have no detail behind Todd. So this shot is just falling so horribly flat and that really harsh hair light that's going on. There's just so much about this that I hate. I would have kept the, the top light. That's fine. I just would have dimmed it way the frick down, taking it off of Bruno's nose right here because that's conflicting there and that's looking kind of gross. And then something back here, some kind of detail. Maybe we were running out of time. I don't remember, but God, that's, it's just, who are you thinking, me? Give me your gun. Why? Same with that black background, looking boring. And that gun sound is like real wobbly and shaky. I, I wish I would have taken that sound out and replaced it with something that felt more solid. Cause it kind of sounds like a toy, which it is. It's an airsoft gun. Don't let him leave. You know, I'm gonna really enjoy watching you beg. It's just terrible, terrible bad guy lines. Even you. Why? Why did I write this? Oh, it's unlocked. 
It's just spending way too much time. That's a great example of an action beat, spending way too much time being like, oh, isn't this cool? Instead of just being cool. It should have just happened. Uh, maybe a, a very short beat to see the handcuffs just fall off of him, but it's spent so much time on being like, oh, I picked the lock. Why? <laughs> Establishing. <laughs> Just worst shots of all time. Can't hit them to save their lives. I do. I do like the clip throw and the slide here. Although it it is leaning towards cheesy action movie. I, I do dig that. And then we have this shot here of him falling over and it's just such a bland and boring shot, which you could see I tried to spruce up with some lens flares and whatnot, but it's just on a flat background, just looking so boring. And so many focus issues in this too, because I was just pulling focus myself uh, with just that one small monitor on the camera. And then we have a bad guy not doing anything. What is he doing? <laughs> why didn't I give him something to do? Why is he even standing like that? And why does he look like he just came from Abercrombie and Fitch? Like what? <laughs> oh my God. More bad guys that look like they work at the mall. <laughs> Tim Allen, I love him to death, but not dressed like a bad guy. None of them dressed like a bad guy. And the reason no one's dressed like a bad guy is because we had no budget for this. We really didn't plan for this. We kind of just went and did it. And then people that were there, we were like, hey, do you want to be in a thing real quick? Some of the smoke is practical because these are airsoft guns like that, which look great. <laughs> Conveniently. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Conveniently. Hey, what's going on out here, you guys? <laughs> I haven't watched this in so long. Oh my god. <laughs> what was that? Like, he's not going to hear that there's a gunfight happening, and he's just... <laughs> He's only walking out the door. <laughs> oh my god. And then it turns into a dance move. I mean, the spin's cool. <laughs> kind of. Not really. I mean, it's all very kinetic and it moves fast, so it almost works. But he couldn't hear that a gunfight was happening. <laughs> like... That never entered my mind. <laughs> oh my god. Then we get to our boss battle. <laughs> and this is the one that we had like, I don't know, we had like two hours to shoot this whole scene out. So not a ton of time to shoot a full fight scene with as much stuff as we had going on. I hate that gun. It looks so fake. It looks plastic. That does not look like a real gun to me. Again, that jitter just drives me crazy. I do like these flares. They're kind of gross. Well, I didn't, that one was a bit much. And this is a bit too shaky uh, coming up. I do remember always being annoyed at how shaky this was, wishing that I would have toned it down just a little. Right now, not so much. Right now, it's fine. Oh, it takes off the shirt. Now it's time. See, what I wish I would have done, I mean, that was just such a dumb thing for him to do, to take off his shirt and restrict his arms for even just those few moments. I wish I would have, like, subverted expectation and had Josh, like, attack at that moment. The, you know, that great moment that this guy just gave him, Josh just goes in for it. Not doing this, you know, I'll wait sort of thing, which we've seen a billion times. One cut per punch, just way too many cuts. Yeah, this is just way too all over the place. And some of it obviously is to get around the fact that, you know, Josh was young, uh, he did an awesome job, but you know, th these guys aren't trained to fight in film like this. So it's, you know, you're making it work. Although they both did a great job. That was the weakest block of all time. He's like, okay, I'll wait for your knee to come up so I can block it. This is a good instance of they both went for it. There is that energy there. When you have a fight like this, even though there's so much about this fight that's annoying me, when you have a fight like this, you got to make sure your actors are willing to like really dive in and go for it. The best example of that that I always give is from proximity, Todd and Justin just really going 1000% or Hannah through the entirety of ballistic. If your actors 
don't go at it 100% and they, they're not believable in that way, then it just none of it's going to work. So even though a lot of this isn't working for me, it cuts way too much. It's way too shaky. Some of the blocks and hits aren't quite landing. Overall, it kind of still works because Josh and Nick were willing to just go for it and really put all their energy into it. It can never feel like someone's, you know, throwing a fake punch. The second we feel that, like that, that breaks the scene so much for me because it looks like a planned block of his name. That sound effect sucked. And that kick to the knee was not, that's a great example of that wasn't committed to enough. That didn't feel brutal enough. That's gross, <laughs> that works really well. It's a bit excessive, Josh, calm down. Uh, but those little moments, like the block of the knee, the kick to the back of the leg, those things that aren't quite landing fully, that they're, you know, we're not getting the brutality of it entirely, totally breaks the scene and what you're trying to do because it's not there 100% and you start to feel the actors acting. It is when I say so. Now just get him on the phone. <laughs> Who's Todd talking to? What is he talking about? Why would I have him say such a Never weird mind. thing? I don't know. I don't know the answer to this. I always kind of dug Did the I? way this scene looked. The wall uh, was a strange color and I kind of like that. Although again, Sit all this cinematography down. is looking TV to me, not film, uh, like an episode of 24 or something, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. I think it kind of fits for what no this was, but I would never want something I did to look like that again. You were to test, which you obviously passed. So the job is yours. You never said I wanted it. I didn't ask you if you wanted it. I'm not asking you anything. I'm telling you, I talk, you listen. And if you're still alive tomorrow, it will be because I allowed it. <laughs> really bad ADR. <laughs> so it peaks a little bit before and I lived with it. But when he screams because I allowed it, it peaked it, it peaked so bad that there's, I just couldn't leave. And, and we tried to do the ADR. Tomorrow, it will be because I allowed and it. it. Just, I mean, we did our best, but it's, it's clearly ADR. I stuck my neck out. Ugh, that because camera I saw move. Something. Todd's right in the middle of the line and there's that annoying little bounce that happened. And that's again because I'm just holding it right in my hands instead of having any rigging. So it, it was really hard to control. So I really needed something to get my hands away from the camera to get away from all these issues that we're having. Like that, like what's happening there? Just the, it's, it's such an unconfident move. It's so sloppy that it kind of pulls the attention out, pulls the confidence of the scene back. Again, close-ups of that gun that looks totally fake. Really? Love that cut. I love that we don't see him kill him and that that was that was cool at least. You did at least something right past me. <laughs> and then a 25 hour walk to the the front of whatever this is, which looks like a mall. Doesn't really look like a bad guy headquarter in any way. Still happening. Yep, what? Is something interesting gonna happen? Are you gonna do something in? No, you're just gonna look? Oh, oh, walking again. Oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Glad we spent a thousand years on walking. And that's, that's the end of that. And uh, yeah, that was as cringy as I thought it was gonna be. I mean, it's, it's great. I love that this stuff is online to show, you know, where we came from and then, uh, you know, where we are now. And, <laughs> and this isn't even the worst of it. We could go back even further to the early sketches and come up with some really dreadful stuff. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of issues in there, mainly with uh, how the camera was utilized. Needed to get my hands away from that. It was super shaky, which led to a, a lot of uh, poor camera moves. And then trying to get certain movements that uh, my resources did not allow for. So that sucked the confidence. That, that was something I had to learn over time. I really wanted this sort of thing to happen, but I didn't have the resources to make that happen. And instead of doing what I'm always talking about now is knowing the intention, knowing what you're wanting the the audience to feel and then going about that in a way that you could pull off to still instill confidence into your audience and convey the same tone and experience. 
I just did the thing that I wish I could do, which was have Dolly Track or a uh, steady cam operator to pull off a move that I absolutely could not pull off. So that's a great lesson for me to keep in mind and uh, for you guys to think about is when you're doing something and you don't have a Dolly, but to pull off the vibe that you're really wanting, you need a Dolly. Maybe don't do the bad version of that. Maybe think about why are you feeling that this needs a Dolly and what else could you do to convey that same intention, feel and tone to your audience and still have a more confident shot so you're not breaking their attention or again, their confidence in the piece you're making. But there you go, me ripping apart my own short film. If you aren't protecting yourself online, you should be, and NordVPN is making it crazy easy and cheap with 77% off a three-year plan by using the coupon code FILMRIOT at nordvpn.com forward slash FILMRIOT. A VPN, which is a virtual private network, works like this. You get a NordVPN account, download the app on your computer and your phone, then sign in and turn it on. That's it. Of course, you can also select which of the thousands of servers in 61 plus countries you want to use. And what it's doing here is hiding your IP by redirecting your connection through a remote server. Doing this makes it seem as though your location is somewhere else entirely. And on top of that, your ISP no longer knows what you're doing. So no more targeted ads or throttling. But the main reason I'm personally using a VPN is safety, especially when connecting to public Wi-Fi. The second you do that, you're broadcasting everything that you do to anyone who cares to look. So if you're doing banking or logging into any of your social media or YouTube accounts, you really need to be keeping your data's safety in mind. Plus, they have a Chrome extension that makes things crazy easy, Android and iOS app, military-grade encryption, no data logging, and it's the only VPN with a perfect score from PC Mac. So jump over to nordvpn.com forward slash filmriot, use that coupon code filmriot, and save yourself 77% off a three-year plan of awesomeness. <laughs> Logo. So that's it for today, which means it's time for my suggestion of the week. And this is a making of look at Terminator 2 Judgment Day, which was sent to me on Twitter. And it's great. I love seeing the behind the scenes, of, especially of older films like this. There's, for, for whatever reason, there's so much more to pull for it. I, I think because it was still in the days of trying to figure out what all this was with the new technology, mixing with practical. So it's all very interesting. So definitely check that out. And until next time, don't forget to write, shoot, edit, repeat. <laughs>